Hey, it's Ron again from RadiologicTechnologist.com. I got another question, uh, this time through email from a YouTube video. Don't forget to run out and get your Zip Fizz for your vitamin C to help you fight against the COVID-19. Uh, I'll leave an Amazon link in the section below. And we are an affiliate through Amazon. We get a little tiny commission. Or they just lowered it even lower than it was. Not that we helped Amazon rise to power or anything with our affiliate work that we've done over the years but nevertheless the question i got was i recently found your youtube channel really helpful i'm currently completing my prerequisites for a rad tech program in la i have a question uh that would be awesome to answer through youtube or here on your website the question is on a typical day how often are you doing ivs intravenous ivs uh, in general x-ray CT and MRI settings thanks in advance so great question first of all a radiography program should be teaching technologists how to um, do IV starts they're very common in all three of the modalities that you mentioned although I'll say much much less common in x-ray um, there's not a lot of x-rays that you use contrast for uh, in fact, all I can remember now is IVPs, um, uh, intravenous pylorograms. But you should have the skill, the skill set um, of starting an IV. And I want to say most programs, it may even be a competency to, to get through an accredited program. And, and it's not hard. I know some people have a big issue with needles. My wife, for example, she's an x-ray tech uh, and she hates needles, but um, she got through it. So in x-ray, it's not really that common. In CT, it is quite common. Um, if I remember last year, I ran a study to see how, much, how many percentage of my CT scans were contrast. And I would say it was probably 45%, 45 to 50% of all CTs had contrast. And um, some settings, some facilities have nurses that start your IVs for you. And you have to remember too that depending on where you're at, a good chunk of your CTs may be coming from the ER or depending on what shift you're on. If you're a second or third shift, you're gonna get more ED patients than you are from the outpatient. So if you're doing a lot of outpatients, you may have to start a lot of IVs. Uh, or if you're on day shift at a hospital and you're getting a lot of inpatients coming down, you may have to start a lot of IVs. Now, a lot of those people may already have IVs started. ED certainly should have um, IVs started, unless you're getting them right after they walk in the door uh, or while they're still sitting in the triage room, as it tends to happen. Um, and MRI can kind of go either way. Yes, they start IVs. Uh, they don't give as much contrast as CT does. Most places that I've seen only give about 15 cc's of gadolinium compared to 100 cc's of, of isoview or whatever contrast you're given in your CT department. Um, and I've seen, uh, I don't know, a good number of MRI techs that administer gadolinium with a butterfly needle. So, you know, IVs, you know what an IV is. It's the full on needle with a catheter. You slide, you slide it in, you, you pull the needle back out, leaving the catheter in, you tape it down, hook up your tubing. The butterfly needles are a just a straight metal needle with two butterfly wings and tubing and it's basically used for venipuncture you put the needle in and uh, you can tape it down or, or just hold it or even just let it lay there actually because uh, in MRI you're only given a small little injection but I've seen MRI techs use the butterfly needle and then hook up their syringe with a gadolinium to the other end and, and hand inject that way and then com complete the study after that uh, does that mean they don't know how to do IVs? No, it just means they found a quick and easy way to inject that contrast and move on. And from an administrative perspective, those butterfly needles aren't cheap. If you worked in a lab, you would know that they restrict the number of butterfly needles you can use per shift because they're more expensive. Um, I want to say they were a couple bucks last time I checked. I did phlebotomy for about 10 years before I got into x-ray, so I used to work in a lab, I was a vampire, and that's what they always said. Oh, are you the vampire? Um, so I did that and then went into x-ray. So how often are you doing IVs was your exact question. In x-ray, not, I don't even remember the last time I did one in x-ray. I mean, IVPs are pretty much old school now because of CT. 
So you're probably not, I mean, it, and it depends on your location. You may end up at a specialty clinic that does something weird, you know, I don't know. Um, but you really, I don't see you starting a lot in x-ray and CT, you're quite a few. And in fact, you can become the expert. Um, in one facility I worked at, we had a guy that was so good at, at IV stars that the radiology nurses would go to him if they couldn't get it started. And so uh, CT, you could start, you know, a couple a day or more, depending on how busy you are. You know, a, a busy department on a shift could do, gosh, I don't know, 30 or 40, depending on if you have help, uh, or, you know, or if you're solo. I had outpatient clinics that would do 23 scans a day uh, with two techs, and, and they considered that busy. Um, I mean, when you can do a CT in five minutes, uh, you can get a lot done, but they're not all CT heads. They're not all five minutes. So um, you need to learn how to start IVs, and you need to be comfortable doing them. The worst thing that can happen is that you either don't learn it or, or aren't proficient, and you end up in a position where you need one. Uh, of course, you can always try to go hunt down a nurse to come do it for you, and, and they'll probably usually start it for you if you tell them, you know, I, I'm really bad at this, I, I really need your help, but you kind of got to be proficient on your own at starting IVs. That's a, that's a key part of being a, a technologist. So I hope this helps. Uh, if you have any more questions, leave them in the comments section below. Don't forget, I have a blog where I've answered over 80 questions about radiography. Um, there's, I don't know, 27 or more videos here on the channel. And I have two really cool podcasts that I did. I was hoping to get more podcasts done, but uh, those take a lot of time and preparation. My favorite one is the uh, the mobile x-ray tech that works in Hollywood. She had some great stories to tell about what she's seen and done in Hollywood. Uh, the other one is about the, um, uh, should we shield our patients or not? You know, when, when the AAPM came out uh, and said, and then the ACR backed them, and said we shouldn't shield our patients anymore and, and all the uh, techs kind of said uh, excuse me what we've been taught our whole career to shield our patients um so i, I interviewed one of the uh, main physicists that actually started that movement and she answered a lot of questions uh you're welcome to go check that out too so thanks for stopping by see you at the next question